name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Back to your program, Trajas. We are commenting on the Gospel of St. John, chapter 6, the famous chapter of the Eucharist. It started with the miracle of the five loaves and the two fish, and the disciples and the whole congregation of the Jew people could see that this is not a, just a man, a regular prophet, but he is the prophet, the Messiah. They believed in him. They believed in the Son of God because of this miracle. Chapter 6, verse 15. Therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. So, although they could see his mission at the Messiah, they he could not understand the real mission of having the kingdom of heaven. They thought of the kingdom of this earth. So they wanted him as King David, as King Solomon, because he could bring food to them and he healed many sick people. So they wanted to make him their king, but for this life. Christ came not for this life. Christ came for the other life, for the kingdom of heaven. So all his teachings were not accepted by the people. They loved his miracles, but they did not love much his teaching because he was always about the kingdom of heaven, the afterlife. But people focused on this life. They did not want the coming life. Therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. So he used to depart from the people to the mountain because, you know, they couldn't understand the full mission. And he loved to stay in the mountain. He loved to pray. He loved to stay alone for some time to teach us how to be filled with the Spirit, how to um, get away from people in order to listen to the voice of God. Although he was God, he did not, want, did not need to be filled with the Spirit like us. But he is our great teacher. He's teaching us how to be filled with the Spirit. Now when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat and went over the sea toward Capernaum. So in order to reach their village, they took the baskets and went down to the sea. They took the boat and they started sailing in the sea in order to go to the other side to the village of Capernaum. Went over the sea toward Capernaum and it was already dark because Christ went to the mountain. He did not, you know, follow them in the boat. He did not share them in this. He put them to go by themselves and he stayed alone. And it seems like they used to see him alone, departed from anyone. So they accepted this happily because of the miracle happened. But they did not expect the problem coming. Then the sea arose because a great wind was blowing. So when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near the wood. You know, this miracle, you know, mentioned, was mentioned in the other, in, in other Gospels. And they all focused on this night because the disciples couldn't understand his will. You had done a great uh, miracle in the morning. You gave us glory and honor being your disciples. We shared you, giving uh, the blessings to everyone. You, you gave us the baskets full of the fragments of the five loaves. We enjoyed this day so much. Why it happened at the same night, we are facing death. And you did not even, you know, come to us. Why you didn't come? Why you didn't, you know, um, help us at that minute? So they felt, you know, conflicted, doubting everything. Didn't we follow you? Did we do anything bad? Uh, what happened? 
why you are just letting go for us and leaving us to face death by ourselves because it took them many hours in this storm and they couldn't see any hope because the sea was very aggressive at that night and it was not even expected they knew the times of the winds because most of them were fishermen but so but it was not expected at that day and they were afraid because they expected that miracle may happen and the sea will calm down but this did not happen what happened is the Lord coming on the sea, walking on the sea, as if it's easy for him to even walk on the water, but the problem was there. Nothing changed. And they are still, you know, drowning. They are still into death. They saw Jesus walking on the sea and draw, drawing near the boat, and they were afraid. But he said to them, It's I. Do not be afraid. So he's saying, I am. Again, he is revealing himself. I am your God. I am your Savior. I am your teacher. I am your friend. You have to believe in me. Whatever it happens around you, it's the same God, the beloved one, the one who cares. Nothing wrong happening. Nothing bad should happen to any one of you. But you should believe, you should trust me even when the sea is very aggressive. Then they willingly received him into the boat and immediately the boat was at the land where they were gone. So after this, you know, night, you know, when you go to read the, the same story in Matthew or Mark or Luke, you will find out that they worshipped him in the boat because they looked up to him um, because of this another miracle they could see him very powerful with the loaves now they could see his power also with the sea he is the king of the heaven and earth and the sea he is the one who can do anything he is the almighty God so Christ was pushing their face up he was strengthening their face because they still doubt many things they when when they face troubles they their faith shaken so he wanted them to be stronger and stronger in faith on the following day when the people who were standing on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there except the one which his disciples had entered and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples look to this because most of the people went walking to their homes and there was only just one boat and the disciples took the boat into the sea to go to the other side and Jesus did not go with them but seeing him on the other side and there was only one boat taken by the disciples alone there was a big question mark how could he be on the other side without the boat but you know there was kind of trying to answer the question maybe we couldn't see some other boats who came from this side or that side but it was you know strange before everyone how could he come the disciples knew the secret because they saw him walking on the water but most of the people couldn't understand the secret however other boats came from Tiberias near the place where they ate bread after the Lord had given thanks. So they had some explanation. Maybe there were many other boats came late at night and they give, gave him some lift to go to the other side. But they always focused on what happened in the last day of the five loaves because that was a big miracle and seen by five thousand families so no one stopped talking about this in 
The people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples. They also got into boats and came to Capernaum. So in the early morning, people went following Christ. So they took all the boats in the morning to go to Capernaum. They loved him so much. They were very happy. They ate with no money all the day. They enjoyed the talk. They enjoyed the miracles. So they thought that they may live this way, following Christ as their fathers followed Moses. No work, no money. We will get food freely. So it's like an easy life. How about this life? It's like accepted by everyone. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into boats and came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? By saying Rabbi, it's still a problem because they couldn't see his divine nature. Still they are dealing with him like a Rabbi, a good teacher. So, so he accepted this at that minute, but they need to believe more in his secret. He revealed himself as the prophet, the Messiah, the Son of God, the Lamb of God, the groom of humanity. So still most of them, they wanted to call him Rabbi. Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw the signs, but you, because you ate of the loaves and were filled. So that's, you know, the real truth of them. They did not look up to him because he is God incarnate, but they followed him because they ate freely. And even all other signs are not considered as much as this miracle, because they believe that how a beautiful life of just taking free food all the time. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. It's very important. Because he started to speak about new food. It's not only a new life, a new birth, a new uh, sort of living, it's like a new food to be eaten. So they followed him seeking the food. So he told them, this food, you know, will not give you life forever, will give you just a few days. So um, do not labor for the food which perishes. Don't give much effort just to have food for this day because, you know, Usually it perishes, but for the food which endures for everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you. So that's a new promise now. The Son of Man is promising everyone to take a new bread for a new life, for an eternal life. It's not only to be born again from heaven, to be the child of God, but also now to eat freely, bread made by God himself for eternal life. Because God the Father has set his seal on him. So God chose the Son to be the bread of men, the bread of life, the life given to people through this bread, which is the flesh of the Son of God. Then they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? As if they are saying, what exactly you want us to do? Now we couldn't understand you. Now we are, you are speaking about a new bread. What kind of bread? We need like yesterday the five loaves, the miracle of covering the five thousands. Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he sent. So the work of God is to, to believe in him. God wanted everyone to believe in him and the Son of God. 
uh, the one who sent by the Father to save everyone. When you believe in him, you will believe his teaching, you will believe his declaration. So when he was saying, now take my bread, this is the bread of life, my flesh will be given at the bread of life, they will accept it. But if they do not believe in him, they cannot believe his teaching. Therefore they said to him, what sign will you perform then that we may say it and believe you? Look to this, how many signs he had done. He made many, many miracles. And they saw the miracles by their eye. They ate from the food which was the outcome of the miracle. But again, they are challenging him. Give us another sign so we may believe in you. So they want to see signs. They don't want to believe. They want, don't want to labor for anything. They just want an easy life. What sign will you perform then that we may say, see it and believe you? What work will you do? So he had done many works. Now they are asking for more. Our fathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So they are saying, if you are like Moses, if you want us to follow you like our fathers followed Moses, give us the manna. So we will eat freely all our days. Prove yourself with this sign. Although they had the day before a great miracle and they enjoyed it so much, now still they are challenging him and they don't want to believe in what he says. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. So when they said, Moses gave us, they ignored the role of God. They thought that Moses is the one who gave them. It was not Moses. It was the gift of God through Moses. Moses was the slave in the house of God. He was not even the true son of God. But they believed in Moses and they forgot everything about God. So Christ made it clear that it was not Moses. It's my father who gave you the manna. And your people, your fathers, after eating the manna, they perished. They died. They couldn't live forever because this manna could not give them eternal life. They could keep them for life just one day. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. That's a very important truth revealed by Christ. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven. So Christ came down from heaven and he ate the bread of life. So people will eat him. It's not, you know, a symbolic meaning. It's a literal meaning, but in a mysterious, in a sacramental way, because God will give us the secret of life by eating the bread of life, the flesh of the Son, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. Again, they did not understand the meaning. They wanted again to eat the food. And they bothered not with the idea of the bread of life, the eternal life, the life of heaven. They wanted just free food. So they asked him, give us this bread always now and tomorrow. Jesus said to them, I am the bread. And that was it. Because when he said, I am the bread, they knew that he's speaking in a mysterious way. They couldn't understand the meaning. How could you be the bread? How can us eat you? So, you know, they were stumbled at this minute and they stopped listening to him. They went angry because they expected to eat for their daily life. They did not want this eternal life. They did not want to believe in him as God. So they were stumbled by this. 
and later on we will continue this important dialogue between the Lord and the Jews. Glory to God. Amen.